Today, we're building a gravestone obelisk that towers over 10 feet tall. This gravestone obelisk is the perfect addition to your Halloween decorations, so join me for this super simple tutorial. To begin, we need to glue our blocks together and I'm using Styrogoo. I link everything I use on my channel in the description of the video. So just click more down below and you'll see all the links to everything. Now this binds extremely well to styrofoam. Just make sure you're using this in a well ventilated area or you're wearing a respirator. So what we're going to do is we're going to pump heavy amounts of glue just like that. And I just like to go back a little bit like this. Perfect. Then grab your second cube and gently place it on top and just ever so slightly shake it a little bit back and forth, nothing too crazy. And then quickly level it to make sure all the sides are flat. And then once you're done with that, put something heavy on top. I'm probably going to put just a block on top of it, but put something on it heavy and don't touch it 12 hours for it to fully cure. I normally leave these overnight for they can fully cure. I wanted to take a quick moment to mention the first book I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat, and it's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. It's rated for kids ages two to six years old, and it follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. If anyone wants to support me or read it to their little ones, go check it out, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. I quickly wanted to show you how it's supposed to all be assembled together with the directions that the block should be in. The base should be two blocks standing upright. They should be right next to each other. The midsection should be two blocks on their sides just like this, one on top of the other. And the top should be two blocks stacked one on top of the other upright, just like this. Of course, there's gonna be a insulation foam board piece right here and another one on the top. So I just wanted to show you really quickly so you know how they go and how we're gonna glue them together. Now, some of you will definitely be wanting to get these styrofoam blocks. I made a super helpful video on where to find them. There should be a drop down link right up here where I show you where to find these blocks in the United States and in Canada. Go check out that video. Hopefully you can get some styrofoam blocks for free. So to add some definition slash decorative pieces to our gravestone obelisk, we're going to be cutting these, what I like to call them stone pavers because they'll look like pavers. I'm using insulation foam board. This is two inches thick and they sell them in sections of four feet by eight feet. This is going to be cut to 16 inches by 16 inches and then the styrofoam block will go glued on the center. I might cut two of these depending on how we end up doing the obelisk but let's cut out one see if we're doing good and then we might cut out a second one. But We're going to use our jigsaw super simple to cut out once we're done let's move on to the next step. All right, to set up our obelisk, we're going to put all our foam blocks together. These on the bottom are the two we glue together. Then we have the middle section. Then we have an insulation foam board piece that's been cut to 19 inches by 12 inches. These are two inches thick. Then we have the blocks that we glue together for the top. And at the very, very top, we have an insulation foam board piece that's two inches thick and measures 16 inches by 16 inches. Really quickly, these aren't attached together, only these two and these two and the top two. So what we could do next is use the same styro glue that we used for these. We could use it in between, or you could put a PVC pipe an inch thick, drill a hole into this one, drill a hole into this one and put the pipe in between so it stabilizes. I like going with the glue method because it just solidifies everything. So I'm gonna use styro glue on these pieces over here and 
right over here as well. I'm going to glue these together and at the top, I'm gonna to glue that one as well. So for the plaque, we need a piece of insulation foam board. I've cut this one out to 14 inches by 20 inches. And then I printed out this using a Microsoft Word. This is size 350, okay? So you just have to edit the size on top because I think it only goes up to like 75. So th size 350 and you can use any style font and you wanna make sure you grab it in the middle. Then we're going to get our purple Elmer's washable glue. And I always like to mark the sides so I know exactly what area I need to fill with glue. So just like this, you make sure you put generous amounts of glue. All of this glue washes off, so we just wanna make sure the entire area is covered with glue. All right, after you get the whole area covered with glue, we're gonna put a little bit of glue on the back of the paper and then make sure you put it in the location where you want it to be. So we're gonna center this like that and just like this. Perfect. Once you have the place that you want it, just smooth it out just like this. So this glue dries fast and in about, I would say an hour or two, the glue will disappear and it won't be purple anymore and you're ready to start carving. We're gonna get our Dremel tool. We're going to start carving this entire area out. Now, if you want a more detailed view of how to do this style of plaque or tombstone, I made an amazing tombstone tutorial. There should be a drop down link on the upper, over here, on the upper right hand side. Check it out, because this exact method we're using is how we make our tombstones, our fake tombstones that look like stone or cement or block. It's amazing, check out that video to know how to do so many different types of tombstone. It's really awesome. So we'll let this dry out for an hour or two, then we'll get our Dremel tool, carve it out, and after this we have to paint it. For the skull pieces on the top of the obelisk, I'm using this very large skull mold that I got from Pacific Mold. I'm gonna link this down in the description. I link everything I use in the description. But this is made out of plastic and we're going to use plaster. We have our mixing bowl right here. I have a little shim that I'm gonna use as a mixer and we need plaster of Paris. Now for this size, this is pretty big. For this size, we're going to do three cups of water and four cups of plaster. And I don't mean just any cups. We have these red solo cups. So we're gonna fill it up to the top, which is more than a, the measurement of a cup, but we're gonna fill it to the top with three of water and then four of plaster of Paris. When we put the water inside, you don't wanna just dump all of the plaster at once. You wanna fill it with three, um, three full red cups of water and then slowly pour in the plaster and then mix pour it in, mix, and then once we're done, we pour it into this mold. But one more thing, we have cut a piece of PVC pipe. This is a half inch diameter, and we've cut it to about six, six and a half inches. What we're gonna do with this is after we pour it, we're simply gonna place it right there in the middle so that when it dries, we have this to anchor to the actual styrofoam blocks. So we're gonna put it in there. I have some bricks here that we're going to use to stabilize this just like so, and then we'll mix it in our bowl and pour it in. The plaster dries super fast. In fact, it starts getting hard if you mix it excessively. So once you're done mixing it, pour it in, put your PVC in there if you wanna put some tape to hold it, and within 30 minutes, it should be solid. So I normally give it 30 to 45 minutes before I plop it out of the mold. So then, just like this. There we go. 
So your consistency should be that of a watery, thickish soup. And now, after we stir it for a bit, make sure you get everything that's in the bottom. And we get our mixture and we simply pour it in. So you want to quickly rinse this out, but do not rinse it inside in your sink, in your kitchen. Do not. This could clog your pipes, have some buildup. So just hose it down in the garden with the garden hose. And just like that, I'm leaning it a little bit towards this side since it didn't fill it all the way to the top. And I'm just using some bricks here to hold it in place. Let's grab our PVC pipe. We're going to put it in there just like that. And we don't even need to put tape or anything on it. Normally it'll just stay standing like this, but that's it. We'll give it, I like to give it at least 45 minutes, but within 30 minutes it should be hardened. So it's been 45 minutes and it is dry to the touch. Also, this feels incredibly warm. So don't be surprised if after you mix it, you're like, why is it so warm? It's like emanating heat. That's totally normal. Don't worry about that. So now we grab it like this and I just gently separate it just ever so slightly like this, just to loosen it up a little bit. And then we grab it from here, if you can see it, and we take it out and we have our skull. Look how awesome that is. Once we paint it, it's going to be amazing. A little side note, when we do paint it, we have to, have to use exterior grade latex paint. We're going to paint the entire obelisk in exterior paint, but this needs to have exterior latex paint because this is very porous material. It doesn't do well like this outdoors. So we're going to coat it with that protective outdoor latex paint. All right, so this is the top of the obelisk and I wanted to show you where we're gonna put the skulls. We're gonna put them right over here, right over here and on the other side. We've made a hole and I've measured down seven inches and seven inches and then since this is 12 inches wide, we did it six inches so it can all be on the same side. I'm gonna put skulls on three sides, the left, the right and the front. I'm not gonna put one in the back because that's where we're gonna put the PVC pipe to stabilize the structure. So you can use a drill bit, you can use a knife. I'm using a wood spade drill bit. We just drilled inside. And once we make the holes, we can put expanding foam in this, just a little bit of expanding foam, and then some expanding foam behind it. And then we can push it in, push the skulls in, and then hold them with some tape. It should take no more than an hour for it to harden, but you want the tape just to hold them in place while it dries. But of course, we're going to cover more of this with expanding foam. We need to age this. We need to make it look like it's really, really old. So I just wanted to show you how we're gonna do the skulls. All right, so for the top of the obelisk, we are going to put the skulls up here, right here, and right here. But we're also going to use expanding foam and we're going to cover all of these sides with expanding foam. I'm trying to give it a stone-like look to this, not a brick look to it. So I'm not sure how it's gonna come out, but I have an idea in my mind, so I'm gonna to try to run with it. So we have to use Loctite foam. It has to be Loctite, it cannot be great stuff. Once we apply Loctite foam, we are going to spray it with generous amounts of water. We have our little spray bottle here. We spray it with water, then we put three minutes on the timer, and once those timer is up, we're going to squish it down with our gloved hand. We're going to get a latex glove. We're going to put it on and we're going to squish it down. We're going to shape it better. We're going to give it the shape we want and then it's going to rise a little bit. But my idea is to give it more of a stone creepy look versus a concrete or brick look to it. Also, we're doing something here that I haven't done before in relations to a tombstone or gravestone. I'm going to wrap this with LED lights. Now, I'm not sure how it's gonna turn out. The idea just came to me about three minutes ago. I'm like, hey, let's wrap this with lights. I don't know if it's gonna look good because it's supposed to be an obelisk. 
I don't know. I'm 50-50 right now. It may look bad. So if you didn't see this lit up at the beginning or the ending of this video, that means it did not work out and we just kept it off. But no harm, no foul. I have some orange and purple lights. It didn't have any solid orange lights. So we're just going to wrap it with those orange and purple. It has to be LED lights. Don't use anything else because it'll generate too much heat and it could be a fire hazard or melt the styrofoam. So use LED lights. Wrap it up, and again, this is completely optional. You don't have to do this. I'm just trying to be experimental and see how it turns out. So let's start wrapping it with foam. And that's what it should look like after you've wrapped it with LED lights. So now that we've wrapped it completely, we're gonna be using Loctite foam. It needs to be this one because we need to squish it after we put it down. So we're going to spread it all over. I think I'm probably gonna need two bottles for this side, two bottles for that one, so on and so forth. But after we've sprayed one side, immediately spray it with water. I have a water bottle here. We're gonna spray it with water and we're gonna let rest for three minutes. After three minutes are up, get a latex glove on and start squishing it down so that it doesn't come up and it's just more of a stone look to it. All right, now with our spray bottle, we're going to spray generous amounts of water on the entire thing. You wanna make sure you get it from all sides. Wanna make this nice and wet. All right, it's been three minutes. I'm going to wet my gloved hand just like that. And then gently, we're gonna start squishing it. And as you can see, there is nothing on my hand. But this is the only foam that you can do this with. So you can squish it really hard. Just like that. And we'll keep on doing this around there. And the cool thing about this is that if there's overspray or there's too much, it's easy to cut off and just easy to deal with. All right, so this is the base of the obelisk. We've driven these two pieces of PVC into this. And we have the other one right here where we've made the holes. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put expanding foam into the holes and just a tad, a little dollop of expanding foam right there. And then we're going to put it over it just like that. And I'm gonna put some blocks on top of it to keep it down for just 30 minutes to an hour and we'll be good to go. So to make your block look like it is a stone or block pillar that was put together, get yourself a pencil or a marker and then start making shapes like you would a rock or a boulder. Got it? They have different shapes like this. And then just keep on doing that. So once you're done doing the shapes you want to do, let's get our foam cutting knife. With our foam cutting knife, we're simply gonna go at an angle and go over the areas where we went with our pencil or marker. And then you're gonna start having these little channels, little valleys that form once you cut everything out. And just like this, we start getting the look of a stone or a block, but we definitely wanna go deeper so make sure you go over it with your knife once again and then just start cutting it out like this. It is super simple and we'll start doing it throughout the entire thing. And see this, uh, this block is damaged even better because it'll make it look more like a natural stone. So once we've carved everything out and we have the nice shape and we go on the other sides, I'm going to use my heat gun and I'm going to pass it along the top. It'll roughen up the surface, making it look even more authentic. I love this tip. Just do the heat gun all over. It'll give it a nice rough texture and then we're off to painting.
So I quickly wanted to show you the technique that looks, let me put it, the camera up here. Look how aged it looks and weathered and it's a, such a simple technique. So I'm using some black paint. So I dab my brush into black paint. See, so just a little bit on the tip. And then I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it on this side so you can see it right here. Now that is too dark, but we have our water bottle right here. And we're just going to spray it. And as we spray it lightly, it starts to drip down. And since it's really dark still, we can add more water to lighten the effect and it'll just drip down and weather it out. And if you have lines that are too sharp, just spray a little water on them and they'll slowly go away just like that and we have a more weathered look to it. So you can also do these with browns and greens. I'm probably gonna add some green to make it look like moss, but this is how we give it that nice weathered look and you can use different types of gray, brown, greens, taupe, blacks, whatever you wanna use, it'll look weathered and neat. To finish off our obelisk, we need to ensure that the top half with the skulls is sturdy and steadfast on the bottom half. So what we're gonna do is we've cut two pieces of one inch PVC. Now I've cut these to about 16 inches, but you can do them a little bit smaller or a little bit longer. So what we're gonna do is make two holes right here on this one. Remember this piece that we did? Yeah, we haven't stuck it yet. So we're gonna make one hole here, one hole here, just right there. And we're gonna go through the styrofoam and we're gonna go down about six to eight inches, just like this. Then before we put the pipe inside, we're gonna put a little bit of expanding foam into the holes we created, push this in there and let it solidify. Once it's done, we can make the same holes on the top half, but we're not gonna use any expanding foam to attach it to the top half because at the end of the season, we wanna be able to take this top half and store it on its own and the bottom half on its own so it's you know, not so giant to put away. So let's make these two holes to put these PVC pipes in. To make a clean hole for our PVC, I'm using a one and one eighth inch spade bit. We're gonna put this to our drill and just drill it all the way down like that. And just like this, we twist it on the inside. Go down as far as you can. Ah, perfect. And now the small amount of expanding foam, my camera actually wasn't filming that part. So we just got a little bit of expanding foam. You can also use hot glue. Fill in a little bit inside of the hole and then push these in right away. They're not gonna go anywhere. And this will be the anchor for the top half. So now let's make the holes on the top half and let's finish this off. So then let's lift up the second part over here and we're only going to gently place it on top of the PVC pipe so that it can mark where exactly the hole is gonna go. So make sure it's centered, make sure it looks good, and then bam, just push down just a little bit. And there should be, and I can see them, there's two small circles that were indented into the bottom of the top half of the obelisk. All right, so let's put this on top, there we go. Ugh, there we go. And we'll just push it a little further down, but that's how we'll do to anchor the top half to the bottom half. And now we move on to the back half where we put some PVC pipe and expanding foam and that's how we do it. All right, so we put our bottom half on the side and what we're going to do, remember we haven't finished painting the back of it, we needed to leave it unfinished like this. So I actually ran out of one inch PVC pipe, so I have some half inch PVC pipe, 
which is perfectly fine because the rebar that we're getting, four foot rebar, is gonna go into the ground and then it's gonna go in through these PVC pipes in order to support the structure from toppling over. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut it to the height of the bottom half of the obelisk, put them like this, and then we're going to get great stuff expanding foam. Boom, boom, boom. Just go back and forth all over here to cover this entire thing, each pipe, and then it'll attach to the back of this styrofoam. So it's super simple, let's get it done, and then it'll be fine. So make sure it's just aligned like this with the bottom, and looking straight up like that. For the cross, we're simply using insulation foam board that we had left over. This is two inches thick. This is 14 inches wide by almost 35 inches tall. You can make it whatever size you want. I might end up making it shorter, but for now, this is what we have. I used a marker and my level over there, and we just drew it out. Now we're going to use our jigsaw to cut this out. To finish the top part of the obelisk gravestone, we have our cross that we've already painted. This is the backside. We have half inch PVC pipe that's gonna run almost the entire height of the cross, just like this. And what we wanna do is leave about eight inches of pipe on the bottom portion. You can cut it if you want, if it's too long. And this is gonna go into the top of the obelisk to stabilize it and putting a PVC pipe on the back will prevent the cross from breaking or bending in windy conditions. So we have our Loctite foam. We're going to put it all on top of it. Once we're done, we're gonna spray it with water just like we did the bottom portion of the obelisk. And after three minutes, we're gonna squish it down and we'll be done with it. Mm -hmm. 